Hello students, so today we are going to discuss about hydrides. So hydrides that means hydrogen as a negative ion or as a H minus. Now in this case we will discuss about three different type of hydrides but not all of them contains negative hydrogen but still for convenience we will uh, call them hydrides. If hydrogen is neutral, negative or positive doesn't matter we will call them hydrides. Now hydrogens are very simple atoms. They are the simplest atom from all the periodic table elements and uh, almost every element will combine with them to form binary compounds. Binary that means they contain two different type of atoms except normal gases because they are very stable. So uh, based on the different type of formations we uh, can categorize them in three different categories. Ionic or saline or uh, salt like hydrides, second covalent or molecular hydrides and third one metallic or non stoichiometry hydrides. Now all of these three categories fall in different type of blocks. Ionic or saline hydrides usually formed from this S block elements with hydrogen. That means S block metals will combine with hydrogen to form ionic or saline hydrides. Then P block elements will combine with hydrogen to form covalent or molecular hydrides and D and F block elements will combine with hydrogen to form metallic or non stoichiometric hydrides. So as you can see we have two different names at least two different names for all of these three categories because they have different type of properties and we can explain it based on their name ionic or saline that means they form ionic molecules and uh, they contains ions in it second covalent or molecular that means they are uh, they have covalent bonds and they are molecular metallic or non stoichiometric that means these type of bonds are formed with metals and they do not follow stoichiometry that means their molecular formulas do not have integer numbers some of them uh, some of the elements present in the formula will have fractional values and usually we do not see in the molecular formulas ionic hydrides are usually uh, usually formed with uh, strong metallic elements that means strong metals and usually we know that strong metals belongs to s blocks they are strongest metal from the periodic table because they have one or two extra electron from noble gas like configuration so usually they tend to release electrons and they form positive ions so when we have metal it try to combines with hydrogen and metal forms positive ion and hydrogen will become negative ion that means hydride so you will get metal hydride compound so these compounds are ionic metals are positive ion and hydrogens are negative ion that's why they are called saline or ionic compounds for example we can take example of magnesium magnesium will combine with hydrogen and uh, as we know mg contains total two extra electrons than noble gas like electronic configuration so normally it loses two electrons to produce mg2 plus ion and released two electrons will be accepted by two different hydrogens to produce H minus. So combinedly you will get Mg H2. So this is example of ionic hydrides. Now these type of hydrides are ionic that's why they have all the characteristics of ionic compound. That means usually they are solid and uh, they do not conduct electricity in solid state but they do conduct electricity in molten state or aqueous state that means when we dissolve them into suitable solvent they can conduct electricity or when we melt them they can conduct electricity because in solid state ions are immovable they cannot move and that's why they cannot conduct electricity ionic compounds usually conduct electricity with movement of ions so it is necessary to uh, for the ions to be free in solid state they are not free to move but in molten state or aqueous state they are able to move now when we electrolyze the compound that means ionic hydrides on cathode you will get reduction reaction on anode you will get oxidation reaction so we have mgh2 so that means mg will be in plus 2 oxidation state 
and it can accept two electrons and it can be reduced as magnesium metal so reduction reaction that means it should takes place on cathode so mg metal will deposit on surface of cathode and at the same time hydrogen is in neg uh, negative ionic state so it tend to release electrons so 2h minus will release two electrons and you will get h2 gas so bubbles of h2 gas will evolve or it will produce on anode because of oxidation and in practical you will see bubbles of hydrogen gas at anode and that it confirms the presence of hydrogen in form of hydride now our second category is covalent or molecular hydrides so usually p block elements forms covalent or molecular hydrides because electronegativity difference of hydrogen and p block elements it is comparatively negligible and that's why they can form covalent bonds if electronegativity difference is high then ionic bond will be preferred and if electronegativity difference is comparatively less then covalent bonds will be preferred so we have different type of covalent molecules or hydrides as mentioned here ch2 uh, sorry ch4 nh3 h2o hf etc now in this case not all of the element contains negative hydrogen but still as mentioned earlier we will call them hydrides for convenience we can categorize this category into further three subtypes first electron deficient then electron precise and electron rich hydrides now what it means let's discuss it in detail it is not mentioned in detail in textbook but we will discuss them in detail so electron deficient that means we already learned about octet rule in previous units so octet rule that means most of the elements will try to gain eight electrons in their outermost orbits and if they get eight electrons via releasing electron or accepting electron or sharing electron they uh, gain noble gas like electronic configuration and that's why they get stabilized so for stability reason elements try to get eight electrons in their outermost orbit as for example if we consider the example of oxygen then electronic configuration of oxygen is 1s2 2s2 2p4 so outermost orbit of oxygen contains six electron that means 2s2 and 2p4 so oxygen will try to accept two electrons and then its electronic configuration will be 2s2 2p6 and it is neon like electronic configuration so similarly if they do not fulfill if molecules do not fulfill the octet rule or they lack eight electrons in their outermost orbitals then we will add them into electron deficient compound if they have exactly the eight electrons in their outermost orbitals and all the electrons are used in bond formation then they are called electron precise compounds and if they have eight electrons in their outermost orbits but not all the electrons are used in bond formation that means some of the electrons are present as non bonding electron pairs then they are called electron rich hydrides let's start with electron deficient compound so example is mentioned group 13 elements forms electron deficient hydride compounds with hydrogen as for example b2h6 now structure of b2h6 is something like this one boron is attached with three hydrogen like this and second boron is also attached with three hydrogen just like the first one but two hydrogen present at the center of both of the borons they are present as bridge bond that means let's call the upper hydrogen as hydrogen 1 and lower hydrogen as hydrogen 2 so first hydrogen 1 is attached with boron 1 and hydrogen 2 is attached with boron 2 so b1 h1 bond will break and at the same time b2 h2 bond will break now first hydrogen will form bond with second boron and second hydrogen will form bond with first boron and this shifting of bond will be continuously observed in the molecule and that's why they will behave as b2 h6 but commonly 
we can rewrite this bond as like this dotted line so it represents these hydrogens are attached with both of the boron so simply we can say that at a given time one boron is attached with three hydrogen so we can represent this b2h6 as two different bh3 attached with each other so now let's check the electronic configuration of boron in bh3 so first of all number of boron is 5 that means it contains 5 electron electronic configuration will be 1s2 2s2 2p1 so it contains two uh, two electrons in 2s orbital one in 2p orbital outermost orbit is second number orbit one is inner orbit so it won't participate in bond formation so we have one pair of electron in 2s and one single electron in 2p so electron pair present in 2s will unpair and electron will jump from s to p orbital so that means you will get something this type of electronic configuration in boron three single electrons so all of these three single electrons will combine with three different hydrogens so hydrogens shares their electrons and we have total three electron pairs three pairs that means six electrons so it represent octet is not complete so we have one entire empty orbital that means electron deficiency octet is not fulfilled so that's why it is called electron deficient compound now let's move one step from group 13 to group 14 so first member of group 14 is carbon and carbon forms ch4 hydride so let's check the electronic configuration of carbon we already discussed this in uh, multiple different units in multiple time but let's repeat it quickly so carbon has six number so it contains six electrons two in 1s orbital two in 2s orbital and two in 2p orbital but when carbon gets excited electron present in 2p will jump in uh, sorry 2s will jump in 2p so electronic configuration will be 2s1 2p3 that means one single electron in 2s orbital three single electrons in p orbital so this single electrons will be shared with hydrogens so four different hydrogens will provide one one electron each in the sharing and you will see octet of carbon is complete we have total eight electrons in outermost second number orbit so octet is complete and all the eight electrons are used in bond formation so we do not have any pair unused all of them are used that's why it is called electron precise compound no extra no less just exact quantity of electron now let's move one step further now as we move from 14 to 15 16 or 17 all of this group forms electron rich hydride so that means in group 15 you will see nh3 in group 16 you will see h2o and group 17 you will see hf all of this forms electron rich hydride let's talk about ammonia first so nitrogen is number seven so electronic configuration of nitrogen is 1s2 2s2 2p3 that means one pair of electron in 2s orbital it is already paired so no bond formation will occur here and three single electrons in p orbital so three hydrogen will share one one electron with this single electrons of nitrogen and you will see octet of nitrogen is complete but we have one lone pair that means this electron pair is not used in bond formation so if requirement arises nitrogen can use it that's why it is called electron rich compound it has more electrons than required so that's why when nh3 reacts with h plus nitrogen uses its lone pair it will donate its lone pair to empty orbital of h plus and it will form nh4 plus so this is the reason why nitrogen will form a co coordinate covalent bond with h plus now similarly water molecules also forms electron rich compound oxygen is number eight so electronic configuration will be 
वन एस टू टू एस टू टू पी फोर इट कंटेन्स फोर इलेक्ट्रॉन्स इन पी ऑर्बिटल सो बिकॉज ऑफ फोर इलेक्ट्रॉन्स वन ऑफ दी ऑर्बिटल कंटेन्स पैर एंड टू ऑर्बिटल्स कंटेन सिंगल इलेक्ट्रॉन्स इन दिस सिंगल इलेक्ट्रॉन कंटेनिंग ऑर्बिटल हाइड्रोजन विल शेयर इट्स इलेक्ट्रॉन सो वी हैव टू बॉन्ड पैर्स एंड टू लॉन पैर्स दैट मीन्स ऑक्सीजन कंटेन्स टू एक्स्ट्रा इलेक्ट्रॉन पैर्स एंड दीज टू पैर्स आर नॉट यूज इन बॉन्ड फॉर्मेशन सिमिलरली इफ वी चेक फ्लोरिन देन इट कंटेन्स थ्री लॉन पैर बिकॉज इलेक्ट्रॉनिक कॉन्फिग्रेशन ऑफ फ्लोरिन इज वन एस टू टू एस टू टू पी फाइव इट कंटेन्स टू इलेक्ट्रॉन्स इन टू एस ऑर्बिटल एंड फाइव इलेक्ट्रॉन्स इन टू पी ऑर्बिटल फाइव इलेक्ट्रॉन दैट मीन्स टू पैर एंड ओनली वन सिंगल इलेक्ट्रॉन एंड दैट्स वाई इट कैन फॉर्म बॉन्ड विथ ओनली वन हाइड्रोजन सो इन एच एफ वी हैव वन बॉन्ड पैर एंड थ्री लॉन पैर दैट्स वाई इट इज ऑल्सो इलेक्ट्रॉन रिच कंपाउंड एंड लास्ट वन इज मेटालिक और नॉन स्टोक्योमेट्रिक और इंटरस्टेशियल हाइड्राइड्स सो वी हैव थ्री डिफरेंट नेम्स एंड ऑल ऑफ दैम मीन्स समथिंग नाउ मेटालिक रिप्रेजेंट्स दिस टाइप ऑफ हाइड्राइड्स मेनली कंटेंट्स मेटालिक बॉन्ड सो इन मेटालिक बॉन्ड फॉर्मेशन यूजअली हाइड्रोजन्स डू नॉट पार्टिसिपेट मेटालिक बॉन्ड्स आर फॉर्म्ड बिटवीन द मेटल आइटम्स एंड हाइड्रोजन्स आर ट्रैप्ड इन साइड द वॉइड्स और एम टी स्पेस बिटवीन द मेटल आइटम्स वॉट इट मीन्स वी विल डिस्कस दैम विथ फिगर्स दैन नॉन स्टोक्योमेट्रिक कंपाउंडस दैट मीन्स दीज कंपाउंडस डू नॉट हैव प्रॉपर रेशियो ऑफ एलिमेंट्स एंड दैट्स वाई फ्रैक्शनल वैल्यूज विल बी यूज एंड इंटरस्टिशियल दैट मीन्स एज मैंशनड इन एम टी वॉइड इफ सम ऑफ द पार्टिकल्स आर ट्रैप्ड दैट मीन्स दीज पोजिशंस आर नॉट एक्चुअल देयर पोजिशंस सो दैट्स वाई दे आर कॉल्ड इंटरस्टिशियल कंपाउंडस और इंटरस्टिशियल हाइड्राइड्स नाउ लेट्स से वेन मेटालिक बॉन्ड्स आर फॉर्म्ड मेटल आइटम्स विल अलाइन क्लोज टू ईच अदर समथिंग लाइक दिस सो ईच स्पीयर रिप्रेजेंट वन मेटल आइटम सो वेन मेटल आइटम्स कंबाइंस विथ ईच अदर एम टी स्पेस विल बी प्रेजेंट बिटवीन दैम इफ मेटल्स आर स्फेरिकल इफ एटम्स आर स्फेरिकल दैन स्पीयर्स विल लीव एम टी स्पेस बिटवीन दैम एज वी कैन सी हियर सो वेन स्पीयर अलाइंस विथ ईच अदर टू फॉर्म पीस ऑफ मेटल दे विल क्रिएट वॉइड्स दिस एम टी स्पेस आर कॉल्ड वॉइड्स so because of these voids they have gaps between them or empty space between them so there is a possibility when these type of metal formation occurs some of the small size particles will occupy space inside these voids that means for this particle it is not actually its position but still by mistake it occupies that location so this location is called interstitial site and that's why these type of compounds are called interstitial compounds usually metals are very large molecules or oh sorry atoms and hydrogen is smallest atom so there is possibility small sized atom will be trapped during the crystallization or solidification or solid formation so that's why they uh, acquired interstitial positions and they are called interstitial compounds they changes some properties of metal for example they increases the strength of metal they decreases the conductivity of metal so usually d and f block elements forms these type of hydrides and 7 8 and 9 group do not form hydride and in number 6 only chromium forms hydrides now these hydrides are comparatively poor conductor of heat and electricity because when these type of small size particles are present in the void they will try to attract electrons of metal and that's why metal electrons are not delocalized or their movement comparatively decreases and in metals electricity and heat it is conducted by electrons so if electrons are not able to freely move then it uh, it affects the conductivities and uh, this type of uh, metals hydrides are non stoichiometric and reason for that is if particles are trapped inside the metal voids then 
there is no fixed ratio and you will see random numbers so if permanent bonding occurs then there is specific ratio but if this type of randomness occurs no specific ratio will be obtained so that's why you will see these type of fractional values as for example LAH 2.87 that means per one lanthanum we have 2.87 hydrogens or we can understand it like this way per 100 LA we have 287 hydrogens similarly per 100 ytterbium we will have 255 hydrogens and so on now earlier it was thought that these hydrides hydrogen occupies interstice in the metal lattice producing the distortion without any changes in its type now consequently they were termed as interstitial hydride however recent study have shown that except for hydride in NIPDC and SE other hydrides of this class have lattice different from that of the parent metal so that means in earlier times it was thought that these type of hydride formations are random they do not have any specific arrangement now lattice that means three dimensional arrangement of particles when metal particles come close together they form metallic bond and first they will form a straight line then a layer and then three dimensional structure in all the direction or all the axis x y and z axis they will form three dimensional proper design and it is called lattice now today's last point the property of adsorption of hydrogen on transition metal is widely used at catalytic reduction hydrogenation reaction for the uh, pre preparation of large number of compounds now some of the metal can accommodate a very large volume of hydrogen and therefore can be used at uh, as a storage of hydrogen and uh, that's why we can use it as hydrogen storage and source of energy now what this point means to understand this point first let's talk about the hydrogen's volume so we know that at stp that means at standard temperature and pressure any gaseous molecules occupies same number of liters that means if you have one mole of gas it will occupy 22.7 liter volume it doesn't matter what type of gas you have and what is its molecular mass so let's compare two different gases let's say we have hydrogen in one container and carbon dioxide in other so h2 that means its molecular mass will be 2 grams and for carbon dioxide molecular mass will be 44 grams so that means at stp if we have 22.7 liter size of container in this container we can fill only 2 grams of hydrogen but we can fill 44 grams of carbon dioxide that means we can fill 22 times more carbon dioxide than mass than the hydrogen currently we use petrol or diesel vehicles that means we are dependent on crude oils so this crude oil has limited quantity in earth and that's why eventually you will use it completely and that's why we are trying to develop alternate options and uh, in this alternate option right now we are more focusing on electronic vehicles but one other source was also available but development was not done and it is hydrogen powered car so this hydrogen powered car are not as popular as electronic vehicles nowadays and reason for uh, reason for that is h2 occupies very large volume that means as mentioned per 1 mole of hydrogen we need 22.7 liters of storage at 1 atmospheric pressure now let's understand it this way uh, let's keep it simple if 1 atmospheric pressure is there then 22.7 liters volume is required so in this case we can feel only 2 grams of hydrogen in 22.7 liters of capacity or tank so if we increase the pressure we can fill more gas inside 
so let's make our pressure 10 times higher that means 10 atmospheric pressure at that time we can fill 20 grams of hydrogen at 100 bar pressure or 100 times more pressure than atmospheric pressure we can only fill 200 grams of hydrogen so that means this will give us maximum up to 5 or 6 kilometers range so it is not practically convenient so hydrogen occupies very large volume this is its first problem so as an option we can use certain large metals as mentioned certain large metal particles they have very high size of voids as for example as we can see in this case the size of void will increase with increasing size of particles if you have large size particles then empty space between them will be large so let's say these metals can form metal hydrides that means interstitial hydrides so hydrogen particles can be trapped inside this void and if uh, voids are sufficient large then we can put multiple hydrogen atom in same void that means something like this so we can trap comparatively good amount of hydrogens inside this metal voids and that's why we can use it as a storage for hydrogen and we can use this storage to power hydrogen powered cars so main benefit of hydrogen power car is hydrogen will react with oxygen and with high amount of energy it produces water so waste material will be water molecules on the other hand our petrol and diesel powered car produces poisonous gases as a weight, uh, waste material so this is main plus point for hydrogen powered cars it produces pure distilled water 